This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez, a property management company partly owned by Donald Trump's son-in-law, Jared Kushner, has agreed to pay $3.25 million to the state of Maryland and to reimburse tens of thousands of tenants in Baltimore. Maryland's attorney general, Brian Frosch, said, quote, this is a case in which landlords deceived and cheated tenants and subjected them to miserable living conditions. The state of Maryland sued the Kushner-owned company after ProPublica detailed how the company hounded low-income tenants with a barrage of lawsuits, eviction notices and late fees, even when the tenants were in the right. ProPublica's 2017 investigation was written by Alec McGillis, who joins us now from Baltimore. He's an award-winning reporter and editor-at-large at the Baltimore Banner. Welcome back to Democracy Now!, Alec. Why don't you lay out what the settlement is about and, most importantly, the behavior of the Kushner company. Sure. This is a really big settlement. Um, it's really hard to find precedent for a settlement this big in a case like this. More than $3 million, as you said. Um, residents are going to be able to file claims for rent that they had to pay on in these incredibly shoddy units. Um, I was in units back in 2017 that had holes in the wall, that, that had um, leaks all over the place, that were riddled with mice. Um, one woman had raw sewage coming out of her kitchen sink. Um, she had maggots coming out of her carpet, um, appliances not working, gas leaks, just these endless problems that, that tenants had to deal with, and they were still having to, of course, pay their rent and, and being constantly taken into court by, by the Kushners. What, what my article described was just this constant hounding of tenants for alleged uh, missing rent and broken leases. Um, where they would just, for years and years and years, go after tenants and former tenants, um, even garnishing their wages. Sometimes rent residents, tenants would find their bank accounts suddenly just cleared out because the, uh, because the company had just gone in and, and, and gotten a court order to take all their money away. And, and they, of course, were utterly powerless often to, to fight back, even when they were in the right. There were tenants who had left the complexes, these complexes in Baltimore, before the Kushners bought them um, in 2012, 2013, in that, in that range. And nonetheless, the company was coming after them for alleged broken leases and unpaid rent from prior, from prior years. They basically saw these tenants as a, as a profit center that, that they were going to squeeze as much money out of as possible. And, uh, Alec, what are we talking about here in terms of the numbers of units that the Kushners owned? And how, can you talk about how the uh, how this uh, payout was enabled? What was the process like when uh, 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 of the lawsuit? Sure. The, there's, there are thousands of these units. It's a whole, really kind of a whole uh, hidden world of these, what I called Kushnerville. These, um, at the time, it was when I wrote the article, it was 15 large complexes all sort of across the Baltimore suburbs. This is not in the sort of, you know, urban core of Baltimore. These are not the old row houses that you know from, from the wire. These are um, complexes built in the 60s and 70s that kind of sprawl all around the inner suburbs of Baltimore, about 9,000 units in all. Um, the the uh, attorney general estimates that 30,000 people, um, to different tenants, lived in these units during the time in question. So you now have th thousands of people who are going to be able to file claims. The way it's going to work is that if, if tenants had, had major maintenance problems in their units and we're having to pay rent anyway, they're now going to be able to file a claim for that rent um, and try to get some of it back. And starting in three months, they're going to be able to start filing these claims. They'll have a year to do so. There's going to be a, quote, special master appointed who's going to oversee um, sort of assessing these claims. Then on top of that, uh, the Kushners are going to have to automatically, uh, automatically reimburse tenants and former tenants for the fees that they were unjustly charged over and over, these late fees and court fees that were often not, not merited and not allowed. So they're going to have to basically automatically disperse that money to, to people. People are not going to have to file separate claims for that, but, but they can now file claims for, for, the, uh, for the rent that they paid on these very shoddy units. And, and, the, and this is uncapped, so that means that the Kushners um, are paying a $3.25 million fine to the state. Part of that, 800000 of that, is sort of a down payment on, on the claims they're going to be paying out to tenants. But that, those claims can go, can go as high, you know, it's, it's, it's the sky's the limit, basically. Is to, you know, if, a, if a whole bunch of claims come in, they're going to have to pay them all. And to what extent has your investigation or the court record revealed uh, uh, the extent that Jared Kushner himself was either directly involved or was he largely a passive investor when it comes to this 
uh, to uh, all of these units. He was very, very involved. Um, he was still running the company um, back in 2012, 2013, when the company decided to make the deci decided to buy all, most of the, start buying these complexes. That was his decision to basically these complexes were providing this incredible cash flow for this big real estate company that was had become very highly uh, leveraged, highly uh, in debt with with very fancy purchases that it was making in New York. These uh, big investments in New York. Um, the gleaming towers in Manhattan that it owned. Um, meanwhile, its its real core business was was the uh, the revenue that was coming in from these thousands of units in the, in these very sort of humble uh, areas of of Baltimore. Um, so he, that was his that was his decision to make to make that investment, and then and then his decision to pursue these people as aggressively as they did, really to be, um, to sort of see, see these tenants as, as this, um, this, in, this incredible source of revenue that you wanted to squeeze as much out of as you possibly could. When he became um, an advisor to the president in 2017, his father-in-law, Donald Trump, um, and moved into the West Wing, he gave up, um, he, he stepped back from that title as president of the company, but he um, all along has, has now and now again has retained a very strong hand in 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 the company. And this is this is this is his this is his project. Alec, final question, just to put the three point two five million dollars in some perspective. The New York Times reporting in April, Saudi Arabia contributed over two billion dollars to Jared Kushner's new investment fund, and you have New York's attorney general suing Donald Trump, as well as his three kids, including Jared's wife Ivanka Trump, accusing them of widespread financial fraud that could possibly lead to the disband of the Trump empire in New York. Your final thoughts? Certainly, the 3.25 million in, in the sort of the scale of Kushner um, and, and their, um, their, their wealth and, and the Saudis and all that is, is a relative pittance um, for them. However, it, is, it's, it still represents a, a really solid form of accountability for these wrongs that we, that we exposed back in 20, 2017. It's, Took five years to get here, but still, there's now some real accountability here for the way these tenants were treated, and for the tenants who are now able to file claims and, and are going to get some money back, even if it's just a few hundred, a couple thousand dollars. For a lot of these tenants, that means a lot because these tenants are living in a, in a world, in a universe where, um, where, in a whole different kind of scale of, of finances than than the Kushners. That's what I always found so stunning was that you had. This is one of the most powerful people in the country, um, sitting in the White House, and um, and just 40 miles away, he he and his company were hounding these people who lived in an entirely different world, who often didn't even know that the landlord who was squeezing them for so much money was in fact Jared Kushner, son-in-law to President Trump. Well, Alec McGillis, we thank you for your work. A reporter for ProPublica will link to your new piece, Kushner Company Agrees to Pay Out At Least $3.25 Million to Settle Claims of Shoddy Apartments and Rent Abuses.